You mean me? You don't see my there was another attendee, and I didn't see um, uh, the person in uh, there. And now I see that it's not your father's Tanya Tucker. Hmm. Wow, look at that. <laughs> so uh, right now, I only see three pictures here, which is you, uh, Eve. Oh, I didn't elevate you yet. Okay, I'll oh, elevate you okay. now. Okay, good. Um, unmute. I mean, I'll mute now. Okay. Actually, I'm going to say something. Um, you know, it's nice to have this being a panelist, but I have to confess that uh, because I have a split screen, I don't always see everybody anyway. I see you probably if there's a lot of people half at any given time, or I could have the panelists um, list open. Um, so I don't really always know when somebody's coming in. I asked Robert Wrangler to no notify me if someone comes in late, because I know- I, I try to, and um, you know, I can set a chime. Yes. So I don't know if you can set a chime. How's it done? Under the panelist thing, I think it's probably a, an, um, a, a host thing, but I, Get a chime when people um, come and go, and um, and then I usually normally either text you or email you. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I, I should go get my. I'm gonna go get my phone so I can text you. Thank you. Hi, Robin. Hi. Look at that, Eve. My Zala's view is that for real? I know. That's gorgeous. Gosh. It could be real. I mean, knowing where they live. <laughs> And by the way, you, uh, I guess we've been Facebook, uh, we've been doing the Facebook uh, stream. It's, it's, if I may, it's a view in Bel Air. Is it your view? It's magnificent. Gorgeous. Robin, you don't recognize it? Well, uh, is it 10979 Shalon? <laughs> no, no, no. Julio Iglesias wrote an album there. Oh. Wow. 1100 Bel Air Place. Gorgeous. I know, it's fantastic. Wow. So, um, I just okay. like my background. It's nice. I see that Nareet has arrived. Nareet, I'll promote you to panelists when it's time um, for your presentation. Nareet Katz is here. Yes, I'll, I'll promote her. Um, oh, she, she wants to speak. Hi, Nareet. You can speak. Hi. I just wanted to let you know that I was uh, muted, but now that you've enabled it, I will voluntarily mute and I'll uh, be here when it's my turn to present. Um, I did have a few slides. Do you you know will be able, be able you'll, you'll be able to share your screen when I promote you to panelists. Okay, fantastic. Thanks. I will be back in a bit then. Okay. Hello, Bob. Eve, how are you? I am well, and you, sir? Uh, good. Good. Very, very good. I got good news today from my surgeon. Well, that's wonderful always. Can I ask you what the good news were, or is it private? 
No, it's not a big deal. Just <laughs> I've been dealing with it for eight years, but I seem to be okay and I'm active and that's all that counts and I'm improving. I have can roll. roll. I had stage four metastatic melanoma eight years ago. Oh. Okay. I had uh, two tumors in the brain, one in the lungs. The one in the brain was excised and the other one was irradiated and the lungs have been cleared up and I've had a clean bill of health now for quite a while. Wow. Wonderful. So I'm back. <laughs> In fact, I ran into Robin one time at Cedars. Yes, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't ever try and go there, but I, my doctor said, go take this test. <laughs> well, yeah. Anyway. Long time ago, Eve, my father used to say that retirement killed more people than anything he knew. And um, I believe in that because I've been as active as I, I've been more active lately. And uh, I think Robin can attest to some of that. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> and, and I'm enjoying it. And 50% um, of what I've done in the last eight years is a matter of attitude and doctors can change that. You have to have the right attitude. And I've had, I guess, the right attitude. Absolutely. Well, I'm glad it's uh, everything is good. So am I. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. I missed the CPAP meeting today. I'm sure they missed you. Well, I don't know about that. Robert, I don't think Robert Ringler, no, I don't think Robert Ringler misses many people. Well, I think he must miss you. Well, yeah. <laughs> he plugged the party house handbook. Oh, did he? Yeah. We have a we have a situation in Benedict Canyon on a party house with uh, between Don Lowe's and Francesca, who's also on the board now. And the three o'clock in the morning, and they are raising hell every night to the point where she can't sleep. I don't know if she's talked to Don about that, but. I gave her the contact information. I told her to call Veronica De La Cruz, uh, who's the West LA DA, uh, city attorney, deputy city attorney. And uh, he's, she's got things moving. So I've, I've gone beyond trying to stay in front of everyone. I'm become an information, I've become an information source, which is fine. <laughs> And um, I don't know if it's on the agenda. I haven't checked it. But is the Ridgeline Ordinance um, meeting coming up on the agenda? I believe so. Let me see. Sorry, no, it's not. It's, it's this Friday. So I'll do it under uh, comment, not bylaws, rules, discussion, Bellagio Road. Uh, Ladira, I don't see it. I'll bring it up during because it's definitely it's this um it's this Friday at uh it's this Friday at one to two p.m. in the afternoon, and I would suggest that anybody who's interested at all in the Ridge Line, uh, this is the first of probably a number of meetings. It's only for an hour, and I don't think they're going to have much more time to make the presentation. So whether we're going to be able to speak or not, I don't know. Jamie claims he's or says he's been talking to uh, Raman, what's her name? Nitya. Nitya. She should be here um, soon. And um, trying to uh, get her to understand some of the things that are going on in our neighborhood council. 
Well, that's good. Yes. Hello, Robert. Hey, Robert. <clears throat> Everybody. <laughs> uh, hi, Nareen. Irene. Hello, hello. Hello, everybody. Hi. That's Royce Hall in the background, right? Uh, well, it's well to my left. Uh, the original Royce. That's Royce Hall. I know and that. And then uh, Powell Library. It's only because yeah. behind me normally would be my kitchen. Yeah. Um, and um, and I and you'll see my wife uh, get up periodically to get a glass of wine. My, which, uh, uh, I'm going to restrain myself uh, to tonight uh, and choose water. My father went to UCLA in 1929. I don't uh, think I was around. Two then. years? No, I don't think so either. Uh, <laughs> well, two years, and then the depression hit, and he was an, ar an architect major for the first two years, and then he had to quit and go to work, as many people did in those days. And, yeah. Well, uh, in those days, Nareen, Royce Hall was the only thing standing. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's some great pictures uh, of it. I think it what was it over on Vermont, and then when they started uh, excavating the campus. Right. I think he was a first class at UCLA, either 27 or 29. Well, I think well it was Marie can answer that for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a, lot, a lot of little fact check going on there. Yeah, yeah, that's all right. We need a little fact checking uh, <laughs> these days. <laughs> truth checking, I call it. Truth, truth checking, not fact yeah. checking. Yeah. I think that's how uh, Obama put it. Uh, anyways, uh, we've got a ways to go. Um, hey, Maureen. Hi, everybody. How's everybody doing? Right. Good. Good. How are you feeling? Fine. I'm feeling very, yeah. very good. Good, good. Well, that's normal. A, oh, <laughs> that's always a plus. Um, maybe a good thing, maybe a bad thing, back to normal, but. No, I, no, no. Being normal, well, it depends <laughs> where your normal was. <laughs> yeah, it's all, it's kind of relative. Hi, Kathy. It depends what you consider normal is. Yeah, that's right. the, that's my Hello, point. Hello, everybody. That's a kicker. Yeah, that's a good essay question. Nikki, <laughs> I haven't talked to you in about three hours. Hey. You're muted. Nikki, you're muted. You're muted. Oh, that was good. Not now. Hello. Okay, well, where are you now, or... Nikki? Yeah, where where are you? Well, where were you? Where Tell you everybody now? and t tell us where you are now. Oh, it's, it's still Florence. Oh. oh. It's another part of Florence where um, I wish I was. <laughs> but by the way, somebody wanted to know who the officer was that talked about um, West LAPD feeding the homeless. Um, they wanted to donate, but they don't remember who the officer was. And I don't remember. Uh, it's uh, Wendy who wanted to know. Oh, well, that's easy to find out. Okay. Very easy to find out. I'll help. Okay. Well, they have the recording. Uh, they recorded it from the station. Otherwise, we'd have. Yeah, but I mean, it's, it's easy yeah. just to call the public relations. Who's who? Who's doing? No, this? no, I'm talking about West LA. Uh, yeah, one of our, I, one that's of our what I'm flows. talking about. The public relations person at West LA Police Department. Uh, I'll no, find out. No. Okay, I'll okay. Find I'll, I'll leave it to you. Just leave it to me. There's our. Oh, Kathy. I remember those doors, Nikki. No. Of course, Robert, who doesn't? Robert, wrong person. Yeah, Robert, nope. just those let me know when you're, when you're ready for the roll call. Yeah, we have five more people perhaps to come. Those okay. doors are entrance to a cathedral in Florence. Yes. And I you, you know what happened? Um, I didn't adjust the date on the um, uh, on the meeting to reflect a week earlier, so nobody got the reminder panelist invites. So I'm sending them all now. Okay. Uh, Meet earlier when? 
Um, Nikki, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm back to water. From what? From, no, no, from, uh, from last month. You from can't what? fool me, Robert, that's vodka. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, that, that would be quite, yeah, Robert. At, my, at my body weight, I would be out in a, about two zips of this if it was. <laughs> uh, I see you're still on campus. Okay. Um, just a I, second. I wish um, I was there this morning, but don't tell just me. A second. Just a second. Uh, Call in user one. Could you please identify yourself? You have your hand raised. Yeah. Um, Robert Garfield checking in. Can you hear me? Hi, you all. Oh, yeah. Hi, yeah, Robin. Yeah. It's Pamela. Hi, Pamela. Okay. I Pamela. think there's a call-in uh, user. Uh, let me see. Hello. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was, it was Hello. Pamela. Hi, Pamela. I can hear you. I'm going to um, mute you now. Am I connected? Uh, yes. Yes, you are okay. connected. Oh, thank you. <clears throat> Okay, it's showing. <clears throat> We're people, I'm still moving people in. All right. Sorry. This is mine. My bad. Okay. Okay, I think we're okay now. All right. Well, it shows that we have enough of us to start. It shows that our quorum will probably be met by those that are here. So I'm going to welcome you to our November board meeting <laughs> at 7.02 p.m. And it's November 18th, 2020. <laughs> I call this meeting to order. Robert, will you please do the roll call? My pleasure. Uh, Irene Sandler. I saw Irene earlier, but I... I you know, I'll get back to Irene. Um, Mark Goodman. Uh, Gail Sroloff? No. Larry Lyston? No. Uh, Robin Greenberg? Here. Wendy Morris? No. Not yet. Andre? Yeah, here. Good, because you know I'm not going to pronounce your last name. No, no, Andre's fine. Okay, I'll stick to Andre. <laughs> I, have, I have better luck with Andre. Um, <laughs> the J that confuses you, Robert? <laughs> uh, I'm just confused anyway. So it, it, whether it's the J or something else, I, I'd find a way to screw it up. Um, Robert Schlesinger? Here. Yeah. Donald Lowe's? Nikki Miner. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Mindy Mann. Uh, she can't make it tonight. She's got a migraine. OK, thanks. Hi. Uh, sorry, I, I heard Robert Garfield earlier. Are you still on, Robert? <laughs> yes, I am. I'm here. OK. Uh, Jacqueline LeKennedy, I see, I see you. Yep, I'm here. OK. And Wendy's and I, here now. Yeah, let me go back, uh, Mark, present. Um, Travis, I, I think I saw Here. you. Yeah, thanks. Uh, Jackie LaFay. No. <clears throat> Maureen Smith. Here. Uh, Teresa Lee. No. Uh, John Wimbish, I think I saw you earlier. Here, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Christy Holmes. Uh, Jason. Jamie Hall. He's here, but I can't. Uh, Stephanie Savage, I think I. Here. Oh, I just here. see Jamie. Yeah, he's a, I got you, Jamie. Uh, Stephanie Savage here. Uh, yeah, thanks. Teresa. Kathy Wayne, I think I saw you here. Heather Roy here. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Chuck McGinnis here. Yeah, thanks. Um, Marsha Hobbs. Uh, Sean Bayless here. Uh, Philip Underwood.
Okay, one second. I uh, I see. John is Lowe's. here, and so is and so yeah, is. Yeah, I just saw Donald. Teresa Lee. Okay. Teresa Lee is uh, here too. Okay, well, let me. I gotta hold on. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I just saw them pop in. Uh, Seven oh five. Okay, thank you so much. If you're leaving the meeting during the meeting, please tell us that you're leaving the meeting. If you're coming back into the meeting during the meeting, please tell us that you're coming back. Yes, into the thank you, Robin, for <laughs> re-emphasizing that point. We're not done, right? We're not yeah. done with roll because I wasn't called. I don't think I was called. Well, I'm not done yet. Oh, sorry. <laughs> We're just trying to do a, a follow-up here. Um, Ellen, I got you. Aif, you're present? Yes. Yeah. Jason Spradlin just arrived as well. Okay, thank you. Dan Palmer. I know, it's you, Dana. Irene on, also uh, is here. Irene yeah. is here also. Yeah, I, I lost my connection. I got it back. Okay. And who was the other person? Jason I got Spradlin you recently. Uh, it was uh, Wendy, right? Robert Ringler, Jamie Hall is here. <laughs> okay, I got that. But oh, Philip, I think, uh, came in. No, Teresa. No? Okay, then it's... Um, mm -hmm. we got it. Teresa Lee, John. Yeah, I got that. Let me see. Wendy. Uh, it's Jason. Don Lowe, I, Jason. Yes, sir. I got, yeah, Jason was the one that I got late. Hold on. He's here. I got him. Well, long story short, we have a quorum. I don't think I heard you call me, uh, Robert, Patricia Murphy. I did earlier, uh, oh, but thanks for, for jumping in. Great, thank you. Okay. okay, no, thank you. Okay, we have a quorum. That's all. I'll, uh, I'll get Patricia back in. Okay, and I see under this attendees, we have a blue hand up, although we have um, some things to do business-wise. Marie Levinson, did you need our attention? No, I, no, I don't. That was a mistake. Sorry. Hi. Hi. Okay. Bye. Hi, everyone. Okay. Well, we have two motions, as you know, every month at this time. One is to approve the agenda and one is to approve the minutes. At this moment, we need an approval of the November 18th, 2020 agenda. That's today's agenda. Is there a motion? I'll, I'll move. I move. Okay. Andre. Second. Who's, who's second? Maureen. Second. Maureen. Okay. Is there a discussion? Is there anybody that's opposed? Is there anybody that's abstaining? Then as I see it, you are all in favor of approving the agenda for today. Yes. Now we're gonna go on to minutes from October 28th, which would be our last meeting. Is there a motion to approve? Move. Who was that? Robert Schlesinger. Robert Schlesinger, second. Irene second. Sandler. Irene Sandler, second. Is there a discussion? Is there anybody that is opposed to approving the minutes from last month? I'm there abstaining. Any? Okay. There's a, one abstention, which is Ellen. Then as I see it, the rest of you are approving of the minutes. Excuse me. Yes. Hello, just to... Sorry for interrupting. Wendy was going to notify you of some changes that were made on her behalf. And I did send an email out with that information. And that would be to amend the minutes that you have received and you have viewed. And I don't know that anybody has mentioned it. Okay, the um, comments made by um, Wendy at last month's meeting were modified by Kathy Palmer. Uh, yeah, there were a couple of incorrect things. I sent her some notes and she modified them for me. Okay, that's great. So as I understand it, we are still in approval of those minutes with one abstention. Are there any public comments? I see no hands raised. We should remind people that if they're calling in, they need to press star nine to raise their hand. I see a blue hand up in the user. Yeah. Uh, you can unmute mute yourself, uh, Patricia. Okay, Robin. Yes, that's Patricia. 
Oh, Pamela, are you wanting to talk now under and public? Pamela, yes. Yeah. Yes, please. Okay, go ahead, Pamela. Yes, I would like to encourage, I believe, uh, when, uh, Ellen's um, outreach committee that there's an opportunity to um, share with all of the people in throughout the Neighborhood Council a uh, phone number, and this is 202-224-2222. That's Senator Tester's number, who has moved a bill to protect all of our federal land, um, federal lands from a very um, aggressive maneuver by the particular individual claiming responsibility for their leasing and uh, acquisitions by various commercial exploratory enterprises. A federal judge has recently ruled that this man, uh, William Henley, is not serving legally in that position, nor has he been for the last 442 days. There are several senators trying to uh, prevent him from selling off any more federal lands, and I believe just a simple phone call from as many people on the board or that Ellen um, can communicate would be a great service to all of us to protect our, you know, our future properties and national forest. Can you repeat so, that number again, Pamela? Yes, it is. It's Washington, D.C., Area code 202-224-2644. Thank you. And I was, I was thinking that maybe this would be really inspirational for some of the teachers that come to the board, maybe the children, if their parents are approving, that they could get an experience just leaving a message. And that matters to these senators, and he's a good senator from Montana, and working with other good senators from uh, Senator Udall from Colorado that want to protect our natural resources. So that's just a suggestion. Thank you, Pamela. Uh, I am indeed a double Bruin, and I understand that there are a lot of Bruins on the council, some of whom I know. Um, so really glad to get to share a bit with you uh, tonight. So as with many places uh, in our county, uh, UCLA is currently closed to visitors by LA County orders, um, but I figured I could bring some of the campus to you. So I'll be doing a quick little virtual uh, tour and then hopefully we'll have time for a couple questions. So uh, let me just do the uh, screen share here. And um, one second, can you all see my screen? Yes. Yes. Perfect. Okay. Um, so my grandparents actually met at UCLA um, and at the time, the campus looked not much different from this. I know with many Bruins in the room, you've all seen different stages of UCLA, but 
Uh, it started out as just a few buildings and the surrounding Westwood community was almost rural, as you can see. Um, we had a big arroyo going through campus at the time and my grandparents were interviewed uh, before my grandpa passed away for a story called Bruins in Love. And he talked about uh, necking with my grandma under the, the bridge there. So with my undergrad students, I have to explain to them that that, that means making out, but I'm sure <laughs> there's more familiarity with the term in this group. So um, in any case, the point is that I, I always joke that I, let, I owe my life to UCLA as a result. And um, I'm definitely a very dedicated Bruin. So in the decades since my grandparents were there, UCLA and the city surrounding it have grown at an incredibly rapid pace till we look like this now. Um, I don't know if you know this, uh, but currently one in 33 Americans lives in LA County, which is pretty astonishing. And our county has more people in it than 42 US states, which certainly uh, could you know, spark a lot of dialogue about the electoral college. But in any case, uh, it's an incredible amount of growth. And um, you can see UCLA in the foreground here. The campus is now like a small city itself, daily population 80,000. Um, you know, many of you are intimately familiar with the 419 acre campus. So with this kind of rapid growth has come a lot of challenges that you are all working on in your role as a neighborhood council, I'm sure, things like traffic and air pollution. Um, and so, you know, I think we as a region, we as a campus have gotten to the point of thinking, is there a better way? As we continue to grow, can we do so in a way that is smarter, that creates healthier, cleaner, thriving cities and neighborhoods um, for all of us? So uh, if you haven't heard of it, UCLA actually is really taking on this challenge in a very applied way. You know, obviously one of our main roles in sustainability is as a, a thought leader and educator. So, um, you know, we have all sorts of fascinating research going on in this area and lots of over 400 different classes, et cetera. Um, but we've brought over 100 researchers together in a project called the Sustainable LA Grand Challenge that is looking to make LA the first sustainable megacity um, by 2050. And it's really looking at energy, water, biodiversity, and a number of different um, sustainability areas. So we see our physical campus as kind of a a testing ground, or we use the term living laboratory. Uh, we are a residential campus uh, with a lot of density. Um, so we look at applying ideas and technologies at UCLA that then could be used by the region. So I'll just give you a quick little flash uh, tour of some of these. Happy to connect with folks outside of the meeting if you'd like uh, more details. So obviously a big piece of the puzzle when you're looking at sustainability is energy. Uh, so we are working on adding more renewable energy to campus. What's pictured here is a solar installation on top of parking structure nine in the south campus. And what's special about it is it's actually connected to a microgrid that is part of uh, research by the Smart Grid Energy Research Center. So there are smart EV charging stations that the center has designed. This is Professor Rajit Dodd giving a tour to the LA Clean Tech Incubator leadership. And they were doing research looking at could electric vehicles actually provide storage for the grid? So you think about charging your car uh, from the grid, but they, were, they actually had cars set up to go the other way. So looking at citywide, what if all electric cars could help provide energy back to the grid and act as storage? Really fascinating research. So that's a great example of the type of um, applied research or, or living lab work that I'm talking about. Um, but obviously, we can't solve all of our challenges on site. So we are partnering with LADWP through what's called the Feed-In Tariff Program to do off-site solar and just signed a historic uh, renewable rate agreement with them, historic for the municipal utility. Uh, so we're now taking 10 megawatts of solar from outside LA, uh, but definitely we'll be doing more um, on site as well. Um, another piece of the puzzle as we address climate change and our emissions is a large institution is our fleet. And just like for LA, we're dealing with a lot of, um, you know, commute and mobile related emissions. These are our beautiful, if you haven't seen them in person yet, uh, fully electric buses. We now have five and we'll continue to convert that fleet. But really UCLA has been a major leader in sustainable transportation. Uh, we had to start addressing these issues back in 1984 with the first Olympics. Um, so we've had a lot of experience learning how to get people to take more sustainable modes of transportation. LA County as a whole 
um, has a drive alone rate of 74%. So most people in their cars by themselves. And we've been able to reduce that to less than half of our staff and less than a quarter of our students through all kinds of transit subsidies and other programs, uh, also to encourage active transportation. So uh, lots of great successes there and a lot that we are sharing with others in the region. If you imagine what the whole region would look like uh, if everyone had a drive alone rate below 50%, It'd be more like the traffic we're dealing with uh, during COVID as opposed to normal time. Um, but ultimately, as we move on our path to carbon neutrality in 2025, uh, we aren't going to be able to do it all on site. And so we're also looking at offsets or emissions credits. And we have two projects from UCLA that received some funding to potentially develop offsets that are connected to UC research. Uh, Professor Gaurav Sant and his team here are actually doing what's called carbon upcycling. So they're taking CO2 from the air and making uh, carbon, uh, low carbon, almost carbon neutral concrete. So concrete is a huge source of emissions in the building industry, and they're figuring out how to make concrete out of CO2, which is pretty amazing. Uh, and their team is actually finalists in the Carbon X Prize. So some really cool research there. And I'm happy to share some links about some of this stuff um, with the Neighborhood Council afterwards. If you'd like to send it out, I can um, send some interesting videos and things like that that folks might be interested in. The other project is one that is on the reforestation side. So professors Tom Smith and Kevin Njabo uh, are involved in a project doing ebony reforestation in Cameroon through the Congo Basin Institute. And we're looking at potentially developing some offset projects through that as well. So a big piece of how we've been able to reduce our emissions so far as we've had such incredible growth is through building greener. So uh, many of you are probably familiar with green building standards and lead the US Green Building Council um, certification. So UCLA now has 52 lead projects on campus, 15 of which are platinum. This is one of the beautiful new residence halls. Things are really different uh, up there in the residence halls from uh, when some of you may have attended and a lot of really incredible new uh, construction uh, that's really very sustainability minded. And part of what we look at is also the intersection of the built environment and health. So I'm sure you're very aware of that from a planning perspective. Um, so we have a healthy campus initiative that aims to make UCLA the healthiest campus in the nation. And one of our projects uh, through some public health students was to look at uh, helping motivate people to take the stairs if they're able. And so these students actually brightened a stairwell that was kind of underutilized and uh, turned it into what they called a vertical art gallery. And then there was also signage pointing to where the stairs were and encouraging people to take the stairs. And they uh, measured and tracked the project with a sensor and found that they were able to encourage 30% more people to take the stairs. So. You know, that may sound like a small impact, but those little steps we take every day add up and, um, you know, having a more active choices in your day, whether it's through biking, walking, or taking the stairs can really reduce rates of diabetes, heart disease, et cetera. Um, speaking of those small daily choices that we make, obviously waste is a big piece of the puzzle. We're working towards zero waste and our students and staff work together to create a single use plastics policy where we're phasing out uh, single-use plastics that just kind of went into effect um, recently. We're also looking closely at the issue of food waste. So um, the UC system and our community college system has a, a really high number of students, well, actually a high percentage of students who are um, experiencing homelessness and an even higher percentage of students who experience food insecurity at some point, um, you know, during their time as students. So we're looking at reducing food waste while also addressing food insecurity and um, we have a, a really neat program. Obviously during COVID, there aren't a lot of in-person events, but under normal circumstances, as I'm sure many of you have attended, we have many events at UCLA and the food from these events at the end can often go to waste if it's not um, captured. So they created an app that students sign up for where they can get texted when there's food on campus uh, that's left over at events and can go grab a bite, which is pretty great. Um, we also have an active food closet and a lot of okay. other programs uh, through basic needs that support addressing food. Yeah. Yeah. Um, another area we're trying to demonstrate uh, is urban agriculture. It sounds like I don't know might why. Need some meat. I'll take care of it. So, so we have um, 
these vertical tower gardens that are a demonstration, this is something you could really apply in your homes or your neighborhood. You might have seen some of these at local restaurants, but it's a way of growing food in a really uh, dense area. So we have 50 of these towers that are growing uh, lettuces and um, herbs for the dining halls. So definitely something that can be replicable uh, in neighborhoods or, or private homes. Our students work on a lot of these applied projects uh, these were students in our uh, sustainability action research program where they do um, applied research on campus and these students designed a stormwater system stormwater capture system that's now at the same um, parking structure Marie, we um, have obviously there are many excuse me i'm just wondering how long this presentation is going to go on it's interesting but i have a feeling we have a lot of business to accomplish on the neighborhood council tonight and we appreciate what you've done so far but i think we, you should wrap it up a little bit okay that's yeah, really we were, up to the uh, uh, president to decide. Uh, well, sorry about that. I'm just going to say that um, at this moment, I think we have time for a couple more questions uh, from the audience here. And then um, we'll thank you so much for coming. Um, unfortunately, our schedule is too tight. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, no problem. I know it was very tight tonight, so uh, I can certainly wrap it up. I was just going to mention some of the um, biodiversity efforts on campus. I know Travis Longcore is part of the uh, council and is one of our faculty members doing really interesting research on lighting and wildlife. And there's a lot that can be done at the, the neighborhood level uh, related to wildlife. So I'm happy to answer any questions and uh, appreciated the opportunity to, to share. Uh, it was requested. So um, yeah, uh, if there are any questions, I'm happy to take any, or if you need to move on, I know we have the new council member joining tonight, so I can always stick around and take questions after that presentation if you prefer. We'll, we'll see if we can get a couple questions now. If you have a question now, raise your hand, please. Donald Lowe's, is your hand up? Yes. Uh, I, I, you, you mentioned the phrase, as we continue to grow, and I'm not sure, I wasn't sure what that was referring to. Uh, those of us on the council feel that uh, UCLA is uh, growing at such a rate and increasing traffic and burdening the neighborhood that we might uh, like to suggest that you stop growing and uh, uh, participate in the city planning a little bit more. Yeah, um, you know, as you know, we work very closely with the city. Most of the growth that has happened in the last decade has been building housing for our students so they don't need to drive to campus, which actually has a really positive impact on traffic in the neighborhoods and reduces trips to campus. And I'm happy to talk about that um, separately. I was speaking more about LA City in terms of continued growth. Other than our current housing projects, UCLA is not expanding or growing in any way, just managing our you know continued student and research uh, population so i'm i'm sorry if that was misinterpreted uh but yeah happy to chat about that sometime separately if you'd like thank you Actually, Any Don, other questions? You, ucla went from a uh, com uh, commuting campus to a residential campus and there's uh, a lot of things where that was initiated by zev uh that the campus has actually reduced a lot of the traffic that we used to have. So and Nareep will probably touch upon that if somebody wants to contact her individually. Hi, I, I have a question. It's Chuck and uh, I'd just like to know when the Sunset Rec Center is gonna open. I, I need to swim in that Olympic pool, get some exercise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, that really depends on uh, LA County. So I'm actually very closely involved in our COVID response effort um, so, you know, I can check if there's any developments there. At the moment, our orders are to discourage um, visitors. We are restricted to house only students that have nowhere else to go. And we are restricted to in-person classes for only a few clinical type courses. Um, so it's really not sort of up to, to UCLA, but has a lot to do with the course of the pandemic. But we certainly look forward to the day when we can welcome you back to Sunset Rec. And it is a beautiful pool up there. Uh, any other questions? I think we'll ask you to put your um, email in the chat and then they could um, chat with you offline um, because we have to continue with the agenda. I'm really, really sorry, but we so appreciate your coming tonight. Can I just say oh, no problem. Some, I have a hand up. 
I, I find this absolutely fascinating. I would like to hear more of it and know to know where and when I can do so. Uh, not only am I a Bruin, my entire family is Bruin. When I was a freshman on campus, the med center was four Quonset huts left over from World War II. Wow. And so, yeah. Well, oh. it's so nice to hear from you. I'd be happy to talk individually with anyone. Um, I'll send some you know, links and folks can explore separately, but I know you have a really packed agenda. So um, thanks for having me and uh, thank look forward you so to connecting. Much. Uh, oh, separately. thank you for, yeah. you for accepting you our for invitation. Me. Thanks and, and go through talk. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. So we're going thanks, to go on with the agenda. Yes, Ellen. Robin? Yeah. Um, um, Niche's internet is down, but we're gonna have an update on the transition and I'll let you know when Jessica is here. Okay, that's fine. Um, so on to the agenda. We're going to go uh, reports of officers, but um, first we're going to go 7F, which is um, a motion for the MER. And I know that Jacqueline is with us tonight and uh, Nikki is with Hi. us tonight. We do have a couple people I think that cannot vote on funding issues and you must know who you are, right? So um, Nikki, sure. are you going to take this or is Jacqueline going to take this? I could uh, do it, Robin. This okay, is Jacqueline. Jacqueline. Sure. Um, Irene, are you eligible to vote? No. Okay, great. Uh, Mark Goodman. Is he absent? Okay. Yeah. Um, Gail Shroloff, is she absent? Yes. Okay, great. Uh, Larry, how do you vote on the MERs? Yes. Okay. Can you hear me? Uh, yes. yes, I hear you. Um, Thank you. Robin? Yes. Okay. Wendy? Yes. Andre? Yes. Okay. Uh, Bob, are you eligible? Nope. I've been trying to get in and I can't, can't okay. seem to come together with a date, so I am not. Don, are you eligible? Nope. All right. Uh, Nikki, how do you vote on the MERs? Yes. Great. Mindy is absent. Uh, Bob? Bob Garfield? Oh, Robert Garfield. Robert Gar Garfield, sorry. The, is he muted? I don't see him on here unless he's yeah. called in. Is he, oh, is he absent? Okay. Yeah, he um, he was here. He left. I saw him before. Yeah. Oh, okay. um, God, I wish I knew what time he left. Uh, That's fine. I wish I knew what time Larry joined in. Okay. Uh, Travis, how do you I vote on the MES? I about, uh, I'm guessing, 7.15. Yes. Okay, thanks. Uh, Jackie DeFee is absent. Maureen Smith. Maureen? How do you vote on the MERs? Yes. Uh, shoot. yes. Uh, Teresa? Yes. John Wimbish? Yes. Christy is absent. Jason, are you here? Yes, and yes on okay. the vote. Thank you. Jamie? Yes. Stephanie? Yes. Kathy Wayne? Yeah. Yes. Heather? Yes. Chuck? Yes. Marsha is absent. Uh, Sean? Yes. Philip is absent. Absent. Uh, I vote yes. Um, Eve? Abstain. Okay. And Ellen? Yes. Okay. Patricia? Yes. Robert Ringler? Yes. And is Dan, Dan is Palmer? Okay. He's absent. All right, the yeses have it. Thank you very much. Hey, thank you. Thank Are you. there any um, persons from elected officers, elected officials, oh. city agencies here today? We have wait, Jared. Wait, wait. Sorry, we have sorry. Madeline. Sorry, we have another motion. If that's okay, if okay, I could yes. just finish. Yes. Uh, uh, this is to get a reimbursement for Bob. Um, I think he purchased some stuff, um, and we just need to get the board to approve it in order to uh, process the reimbursement. There. <laughs> Bob, can you explain a little bit um, what they are? I purchased a piece of paper and like 
purchase a set of ink cartridges for the 11 by 17 um, scanner that the BCA owns. Um, Kathy normally does it. I called her. She said it'd be easier if you did it. So I did it. And ah, there we are. Okay, that's great. So then it saves uh, some time from uh, Kathy. I three, okay. I left three packages of paper for Kathy at the office if she goes there. We usually do that. That's awesome. Thank you very much, Bob, for doing that. Um, okay, Irene, you're recused. Um, Mark Goodman is absent. Uh, Gail is absent. Uh, Larry? What's the um, motion? The motion is I'm to sorry. approve uh, for a reimbursement to Bob. Um, oh, of, co of course. Of course. Yeah. I... Hello? You're breaking in and out, or maybe I'm breaking in and out. Yeah, my connection is very bad for some reason. I've just discovered it. I'm having a lot of problems. So the answer is yes on that vote. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, Robin? Yes. Wendy? Yes. Andre? Yes. Uh, Bob Schussinger. Okay, he's recused. John is recused. Uh, Nikki? Yes. Mindy? Uh, absent. Um, Bob Garfield, is he back in yet? Is he still out? I, I don't see him. I don't see okay, him. Okay, maybe he left. Uh, maybe Travis? How do you vote on reimbursing uh, Bob Schlesinger yes. for supplies? Okay. Uh, Jackie is, the fee is out. Um, Maureen Smith? Uh, Maureen, are you muted? No, yes, yeah, thank sir. you. Teresa? Yes. John Wimbish? Yes. Thank you. Uh, Christy is absent. Jason? Yes. Jamie? Yes. Stephanie? Yes. Kathy? Wayne? Yes. Thank you. Uh, Heather? Yes. Chuck? Yes. Marsha is absent. Sean? Yes. Philip is absent. Myself, yes. Uh, Eves? Yes. Ellen? Yes. Patricia? Yes. Robert Ringler? Yes. Dan and is Dan. absent. And the yes. guests will have it. Thank you, guys. Okay. So uh, we're going back one second to see who's here uh, representing elected officials. Is Madeline here? I see Jared Thompson. Oh, yes. Jared here. Hi. Hi and Jared's here. Um, I will keep it short. Uh, I've been away for a little, but I'm sure Brad took care of you guys. Um, this is going to be my last meeting with y'all. Uh, probably a good time to mention since it's my last meeting and we're not all in a room together. I am a USC graduate, but I have loved getting to know all you Bruins. I loved that presentation by Nurit. It was so interesting. Um, and it really has just been such a pleasure to work with you guys and get to know your neighborhoods. Um, I know CD4 covered, you know, a smaller portion of the Bel Air Beverly Crest neighborhood council, but the people that I did work with, um, you guys are warriors for your communities. They are so lucky to have you. Um, working with Jarrett and CD5, working with all the other levels of government and all your, you know, neighborhood leaders and just community members has really been just such a pleasure. There's really no other word for it. Um, and you guys have really taught me a lot, been so kind to me and taken me under your wing. So I really am forever indebted to you. Um, wherever I land, I'll let you guys know. I know most of you have my personal number, personal email. Um, don't be strangers. And uh, if you don't have it and want to reach out, just let me know. Um, but I'm here until December 11th. So if there's any party house that needs shutting down, I heard those were solved while I was away. No more party houses. Um, just let me know and I'm happy to help as best as I can. So thank you guys so much. It's really been so great. So. Well, Madeline, we love you so much. And thank you thank so you. much. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank we you. love you. We'll miss you. <laughs> thank you, Maddie. We'll miss you guys, too. Thank when you, this is you. all over, we'll rent an Airbnb in the hills and have a big party.
<laughs> just cooking. No, no fires. <laughs> hey, we have Veronica De La Cruz with us this evening. Yeah, I just wanted to say something real quick. I had my hand raised. Um, I'm sorry, I did not see it. Please. That's okay. Um, and I'm just going to reiterate what everyone else said, but I just want to say, Madeline, how much um, we just... and be in party houses in party houses yeah. Yeah. so, so madeline can have a place to go to when she <laughs> when she moves on i now remember veronica from last year thank you hey nicole minor hi i i just wanted to ask veronica if there's an update on the party house in the 2500 block of benedict canyon that uh, created such a chaos over the weekend I think that Officer Ojeda is working on that with the officers. They haven't submitted a packet to, to me that I, I, yet, but I know that they're working on it. And I know that they're with the new Safer at Home order and, and the mayors um, wanting to work with shutting off utilities, I think they're going that route first on a lot of these locations. So that might explain why I haven't received a packet. They may be pursuing that avenue first. Well, I hope so. It was chaos all over the canyon. And it's also so dangerous when all these people in cars just feel that they own the street and it's a thoroughfare street. You know what happens besides from the noise that went all night long and people just being chaotic. So thank you very much for your assistance in all this and all your help in all these matters. You're terrific. We want to thank you. Sure. I want to give credit also. There's There have been a lot of um, locations that have been preempted. Um, we've been getting recently, we've been getting really good cooperation with Airbnb. Um, and so we've been able to preempt a lot of uh, gatherings that they have flagged as possible possible gatherings that could turn into something ugly. So I just want to let you know that a lot of people are working behind the scenes to preempt when we can preempt um, a, a large gathering like that. Oh, that's reassuring. Thank you. Our last question, Irene Sandler, then we have to move on. Yes, um, I wanted to ask what has happened as a result of the police arrests that they have made for various crimes we, I was on the online with Robert's group today. Since we have COVID, are they jailing people? Are they fining people? What are they doing? Yes, yeah, so the officers have continued to make arrests, but and we hear feedback from the community that they don't feel because they see the people out right away. And that's because of the safe red, the COVID orders have made a lot of crimes zero bail. So what that means is officers will book the individuals but they'll get released and cited out to a future court date. So we're still prosecuting and we'll start processing, but um, right now people are not staying in jail, but for certain specific offenses. Um, so it is, it has been a lot more difficult to prosecute in these, in these COVID, under these COVID orders. I was afraid of that. Yes, it's, it's made our job a lot tougher. Well, thank you so much for 
being here tonight and we appreciate everything that you do. And uh, at this moment, I think we have, um, as I understand it, we were supposed to have Nitya with us tonight and her internet is down. So Jessica Salon, Salons is with us tonight who works with uh, Nitya, is that correct? That's right, I was one of her campaign managers during the campaign, uh, both myself and my colleague, Megan, who also served as her co-campaign manager, will be in leadership positions during this transition and probably for the first year while she's in office. Hi, <laughs> so sorry for the inconvenience. I'm sorry that I'm the pinch hitter for tonight, but um, I'm very happy to update you with where we're at with transition um, and then answer any questions that you might have. Okay, then why don't you um, give us a couple minutes of, of what you have to tell us and we'll take a couple minutes of questions. That sounds great. Thank you so much. Um, and thank you for being flexible. Uh, Nithya really wanted to be here um, and unfortunately, uh, technology. So um, we are having a very smooth transition process so far. We're really grateful to Council Member Rue's office. We're in weekly talks with Nick Grief, his chief of staff, um, for the, you know, to get work memos from current staff in order to have a smooth transition with projects that are in the works. Um, we've been in touch with all the council members um, across the city, and that's been really lovely. Um, we have been talking with the city clerk and the CLA's office and uh, with general services division just to get everything set up. Um, we are looking at uh, potential council offices, which probably won't happen because of the bureaucracy until April, but that's also fine because of COVID. Uh, but we're really excited about the transition. Um, how we're handling it too is that my email from the campaign is still up and running, as is our contact email account. So if there is are any concerns that you want us to know about, you can email me directly. I can give you my email address before I leave tonight. Um, we're filing those away and we hope to have some staff, some skeleton staff in place by November 30th that can start with us our first day, which will be December 14th. Um, council will be in session December 15th. Um, so that will be Nithya's first day voting. Um, and as soon as we have staff in place, we hope to tell people what we're looking at right now is a skeleton team that can really help put systems in place for the long term. Um, and then we will build out staff within the first couple of months from there. Um, so again, I'm very available for questions. I know Nithya wanted to be here and um, will be here if you're on for the December meeting and if not for the January meeting. Um, so we wanna be accessible to everybody. And is there somebody that has a question? Oh, I see Jamie Hall has a blue hand up. Surprise, surprise, Jamie has his hand up. Um, so Jessica, so great to, uh, great to actually um, see your face. I know we've emailed several times. Um, and so I want to reiterate uh, kind of publicly that um, we would love for you, uh, for council member elect Raman, uh, to hire an environmental planner. Uh, right now, Councilman Koretz is the only staff member, I mean, the only council member that actually has that. And that's a person that's actually committed to doing the environmental work. A lot of the other council members just kind of say, well, let's let our legislative deputy do that or let's let our planning uh, deputy do that. Um, but um, I respectfully think that, you know, that uh, you need to actually have a planner who's dedicated and committed to that one issue. And they could work in partnership with Andy Schrader at Councilman Koretz's office. Um, that would be a huge thing because if we're gonna usher in the Green New Deal, we need to have staff. Um, and then the other thing, and we can't help this, is that um, the city is, you know, at the end, we're, they're about to adopt the Hollywood Community Plan. We have the first hearing on December 9th. Your guys are coming in on December 15th. They're going to then go to CPC probably, um, you know, early next year. And they said that they want to have this thing fully adopted um, by the middle of next year. And we put in a tremendous amount of work. Um, and... Uh, so we want to work with um, your staff um, to tell them what our expectations are because we don't have what we want in the Hollywood Community Plan. You would be amazed if you looked at it. At first, they gave us one page out of the entire Hollywood Community Plan. The hillsides were really just kind of an afterthought. So we were hoping um, that we could make some changes because we only get one community plan every 20 years. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. We, yeah, so that, that's probably going to be high on your list of things to do. And it is what it is. You know, you just came in right at this moment. So, um, 
So I think what sounds good is, you know, we're, t we're connecting with the head of planning next week. Um, and so we will ask him who on his staff is heading that up in order to take a meeting. And we should probably have a meeting with you and other uh, constituents have been involved with that so we can get briefed on how it's been happening and any missing parts that are in there and anything we can do to uh, make sure that concerns are addressed. Great. And thank you again and for coming. I hear you on the env environmental part too, and that's definitely an issue. So is tenants' rights. I know that that's a big issue in our in our district too. And so having a field deputy who's specific in tenants' rights, and also having a legislative uh, deputy or director who's very well versed in environment policy. There's definitely long term things that we want to do to make sure that LA is a sustainable city across the board, and that's very sure. important to this office. Wonderful. Yeah. Ellen Evans gets to ask the last question. <laughs> Um, it's more of a statement, it's only a sentence, so maybe somebody else can go after. Um, I, I just look forward to um, helping you guys understand what's going on in our area, that's all. Great, we're here for it. Well, thank you well, so much. Robert, I, th I, th I think you forgot Jared. No, I didn't, he's next. <laughs> oh, good, okay. <laughs> you want to leave him out in the cold. Donald uh, Post? I, yeah, yes. Uh, You're muted, Donald Lowe's. Uh, one of the things this council has been working on for a substantial amount of time together with CD4 is the, a proposed pilot program for Ridgeline Ordinance. This Friday is a, a webinar and uh, it, it's, that's a subject that's very high on both of our agendas and something that we hope you'll be familiar with so that you can participate with us. And uh, please uh, make sure that you're all, uh, a, a group uh, participates in getting the presentation that will be put on by planning uh, this Friday from one to two o'clock. Great, I can definitely be on that. Is there someone on this Zoom that would be able to forward me that information? I, I, I can do that. John, you beat me to it. I was go. I'll put it in the chat box for everyone. It was a part of my spiel tonight, anyway. Oh, hi, Jared. It's good to see you again. <laughs> Thanks, Jared. Well, thank you, Jessica, for coming. And, and Jared, would you like Jared? You're muted, but would you like to speak to us now? Yes. Hello, everyone. You have a busy night, so I have four quick items, and Don already covered one of them. Uh, the Ridgeline Ordinance meeting. It's a webinar. Is this Friday? Uh, from one to two, I will post the link in the chat.